Good afternoon, I'm Dennis Galecki. Welcome to the 434th Imagine Greater Buffalo program and another virtual Imagine lecture hosted by our wonderful Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. So thank you so much for joining us today. It is a special program because we are honoring this year's Imagine Greater Buffalo uh, recipient, Mary Roberts. Our October programs are themed around the 10th anniversary of the National Trust for Historic Preservation Conference that took place in Buffalo in 2011. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History and Nature and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. Now we're going to start with our speaker shortly, but first a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted during our speaker's presentation. If you do have a question, please type it into the chat box and we'll get to as many as we can. This program is being recorded. You'll be able to watch it again later on the library's Facebook and YouTube channels. And we hope you share the link with your friends and networks. Now, our featured speaker, uh, is Mary Roberts, the executive director of Frank Lloyd Wright's Martin House, an organization dedicated to restoring, preserving, and interpreting Frank Lloyd Wright's masterful and greatest early career residential design work, the Darwin D. Martin House, a national historic landmark and New York State historic site. The Martin House is widely viewed as a model of excellence in historic preservation and sustainable economic development and serves as a linchpin for architectural tourism in a city of American architectural masterpieces, Buffalo, New York. Mary leads a dedicated board, staff, and hundreds of active volunteers in service to rights organic principles for her effort Mary Roberts is receiving our annual Imagine Greater Buffalo Recognition Award. Cezanne is a digital enterprise and network designed to help link volunteers and lifelong learning communities as part of the Buffalo Chautauqua idea. Mary Roberts has certainly done just that while steering the Martin House Complex to completion. Again, congratulations, Mary. And let's hear all about the Martin House. Thank you, Dennis. It's wonderful to be here again with Cezanne. I really appreciate the invitation and I'm honored, flattered and humbled by the award. I appreciate the opportunity through the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library System too to provide an overview. And I guess I'd call it a current status report on, on Frank Lloyd Wright's Martin House. And I have to say that when I imagine our community, it is with hope and optimism. Um, our library system, too, is such an integral part of our quality of life. I love to be part of this. I grew up using the Brighton Library. I raised my children using visiting the Kenmore Library. And when I walk into the downtown library, I'm always surrounded by happy memories of research, lectures, events, and just enjoying all that programs like you offer in the public libraries have meaning in our life. So thank you for, for including me today and for honoring me with this award. I have some pictures to share, which I think would be more enjoyable than just looking at our faces the whole time. So I'm gonna share my screen right now and minimize my PowerPoint or minimize my... Uh, so there, is that working effectively? Yes. Okay. Um, well, I know that this audience is a wide range of people, some of you who have some information about the Martin House, some of you that have very little. <clears throat> so I'm going to provide an overview of what we've done over the past 20 plus years, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about where we are today and how we imagine the Martin House in the future. So for those of you that don't know it, Buffalo, New York, and excuse me, I'm working from two screens here, so I have to think about this and advancing my PowerPoint. Buffalo has world-class architecture. Dennis loves to talk about 
<clears throat> excuse me, art history, architecture, and nature, and it's all here. But Buffalo is one of those cities that has not only a collection of right design buildings, including the Martin House and the Summer Estate for the family Greycliff in Durban, New York. We also have major commissions by Louis Sullivan, H.H. H. Richardson, the Burnham Buildings, Saarinen's, the Frederick Lowe Olmsted Design Park System, and unique structures such as our grain mills. And really the quality and the range of architecture in Buffalo is among the best in America. There's no doubt about it. And in Frank Lloyd Wright's relationship with Darwin Martin, um, we had a visionary artist and really he was a revolutionary force in modern culture of the 20th century. And Darren Martin really was a singular patron who would become a lifelong friend and who would lead Wright to some of his most important commissions, including the Larkin building that we like to talk about too, beyond the Martin House and Great Cliff in Buffalo. So here in the first part of his career, Wright's genius was marked by his vision to create a new form of American architecture that was based on the open landscape of the Midwest Prairie. And at the Martin House, he redefined traditional concepts of space by connecting the built environment to the natural world in very novel ways, calling his design a domestic symphony. The estate was built from 1903 to 1905, and it consisted of the Barton House, the smaller home built for his sister, the main 15,000 square foot Martin House, a glass roofed conservatory that linked the Martin House by a hundred foot long open air pergola, a carriage house complete with chauffeur's quarters. And in 1909, not shown here on this sketch, but there was a gardener's cottage added to the estate. What's unusual is that Wright not only designed the buildings, but every aspect of the estate's decorative elements, nearly 400 art glass windows, doors, skylights, extensive furnishings, both freestanding and built-in, um, light fixtures, he chose statuary, selected Japanese prints, a uh, spectacular glass mosaic fireplace, all part of his integrated design approach and something very unusual for the time and very unusual for him too. So while the design was enjoyed by the Martins very much so for more than 30 years after the death of Darwin Martin in 1935, the house stood empty for nearly two decades and the site deteriorated very badly, uh, becoming really a symbol of neglect. And in the early 1960s, three major elements, the pergola, the conservatory and the carriage house were actually demolished. This is a good picture as we're getting ready for Halloween, isn't it? Um, Adding insult to injury, a three building apartment complex was constructed shown here with the white roofs basically in between the Martin and the Barton houses. But in the early 1990s, our community started to talk about and summon the will as Dennis described it to begin the long process to reacquire, reassemble and restore the original one and a half acre historic site. It was an improbable project to say the least. So we began incrementally. We started with the very first phase to replace and repair roofs and gutter systems. And we invested nearly $2 million in two years in that work at both the Martin and the Barton houses. And they were restored just in time for the 1997 Frank Lloyd Wright Building Conservancy's visit to Buffalo. And interestingly, that group is returning again this week for their annual conference here in Buffalo. The next phase of work was uh, undertaken in 2003 and four, and it was foundation and drainage work. It was nearly three quarters of a million dollars, not very glamorous, but very necessary, really hard to fundraise for this unglamorous work, but we got it done. The next major chunk of work was a multi-year process, basically 2004 through about 2006. And that is the period during which we reconstructed the pergola, the conservatory and the carriage house. That work took a, well, in, in, had a price tag of about $8 million. Um, but I have to say that recreating these structures was essential to interpreting Wright's genius for the integration of the buildings and the landscape. It was all about his ability to open spaces one into another and the connectivity to the outdoor and the organic environment too that made this so instrumental and influential. Um, hold on, it's not advancing. There we go. Phase four in 2007 and eight focused on the exterior restoration of the Martin House, all the mortar and masonry. We also removed some non-historic additions to the building, repositioned an exterior wall that had been remodeled over time. The next big phase of work actually was done 
with an eye towards the National Trust Conference in 2011 in a somewhat serendipitous calendar fashion. This was an $11 million scope of work that lasted over five years, and it was broken into two phases, phase five. First was updating all the mechanical systems in the Martin House to create a museum quality environment. This phase also saw restoration of the extensive woodwork, all the plaster was redone, the color washes or glazes on the plaster, as well as returning all the, his, the original historic furnishings that were in place. Sorry, that went a little too fast. And then this massive four-sided fireplace surrounding, this massive four-sided glass mosaic surrounds the central fireplace in the house. This was also replicated. It included more than 15,000 handmade pieces interspersed with a few dozen original glass tiles from the original facade that was lost over time. And you can see it's a depiction sort of rugged brown trunks that intertwine as they spread across over the mantle and the brick piers with green shimmering leaves that cascade down uh, with pure gold wisteria leaf blossoms on it. Our next phase of work, this is advancing too quickly, excuse me, was 2017 and 2018. And the Barton House, the secondary home, was also restored. It was nearly a $2.5 million investment. What was nice about the Barton House was that it was mostly intact, or I should say one of the most intact historic structures on the site. And it's the perfect example of a middle-class home that Wright designed, but it includes all its own original art glass, light fixtures, built-in furnishings, again, also designed by Wright. We also took a break in the middle of construction as a necessary addition adjacent, addition adjacent to the historic site. We built an award-winning uh, visitor center. It was designed by Toshiko Mori Architect. Um, she describes it as bringing a 21st century sensibility to Wright's theory of organic architecture. This building really expands on Wright's concepts of harmony with nature. It's a transparent glass pavilion and it's integrated into the landscape directly west adjacent to the historic site. The building provides guest services, also interpretation, and it also serves as a location for a wide variety of educational programs, uh, community and special events that we host on site as well. Next, we turned our attentions to the architecture on the outside. So in combination with the interior design, the Martin House landscape is really the third element of Wright's organic vision. This was technically a rehabil rehabilitation of a lost landscape that was completed in late 2019. And it was based on extensive research using Wright's original plans, historic photos, written documentation, and it has been an extraordinary addition to the site. For people that love research, look at resources on our website and you'll see the cultural landscape report on there. It's a fascinating bit of information. The landscape was about a $2 million project that included the planting of about 8,000 flowers, plants, trees, shrubs, you name it, it's there. What we did was recreate all the individual components of Wright's design in some sense sense we created rooms or it re recreated his rooms in outdoor settings and we maintained all the visual and spatial characteristics of the historic landscape. This landscape, this is a photo from a year ago, it's now in it's our second full year of growth and it is overflowing with trees, shrubs, flowers and it really is almost a park-like setting on the historic estate and really visitors can enjoy the landscape in its glory from May to October. So we encourage guests to simply walk around our site and enjoy all there is to see there. Okay. Um, what I'd like to say is turn now to the current times and say a little bit about Buffalo. Buffalo really is at a tipping point as a destination market for arts and architecture. And the Martin House is widely viewed as the centerpiece of architectural, architectural tourism and as Dennis kindly suggested, a symbol of our community's renaissance. And beyond just simply preserving a national historic landmark, the restored Martin House really demonstrates how smart growth preservation investments can create significant economic impact. I'm gonna ignore the pandemic for a minute and say that you know, prior to the pandemic, we were really hitting our stride nearing 40,000 visitors a year. What we projected as our midpoint of visitation, wherein we would spin off 15 to $20 million of economic impact into the community. The pandemic of course has you know, put things on hold in a certain way, but still the future is now. And what does the future hold for the Martin House? Well, our mission is pretty much the same. It's to preserve, interpret, promote, and sustain this integrated composition of world-class architecture, design, and landscape. 
But our vision is really to be a dynamic and celebrated masterpiece of innovative architecture so that we can inspire and attract new visitors with the power of design in harmony with nature. I feel like I'm reading from Dennis's script when I talk about what we do in terms of architecture and nature. So nowadays, in addition to all the tours that we offer, all the things that we provide to public that visit here from all across America and the globe, really, we've really returned to our tour and our community programs this year, but somewhat in an adjusted fashion. We accommodate smaller group sizes than in the past, in line with increased health and safety protocols. In addition, we're very happy because we are still enjoying the benefits of the Kaneko Art Exhibit, which has been on our site for the past year and a half. For those of you that haven't been here, I'd invite you to come take a visit before the end of this month. It's starting to be, it was scheduled to, it is scheduled to be deinstalled beginning October 25th. But this is a wonderful selection of seven massive sculptures on the grounds outside the Martin House, and there's three smaller ones in our visitor center. And he's an artist, um, Japanese born, works out of the Midwest. And really these are wonderful collections, writes Japanese design aesthetic, all ties into this. And we're doing this in partnership with the Albright Knox Art Gallery. So we're very pleased to be part of that. And there's one more image of them. So even amidst the landscape, we hold programs. This is an example of a community program that we held this year. It's called Music in Bloom. We invited people to come sit on the grounds and enjoy some music amidst the blooms that were here on the estate. Um, this is some of our education programs on site. This is a big part of our continuing outreach and commitment to the community. So we invite students of all ages to participate in a wide variety of STEAM related lesson plans, learning activities in conjunction with what we have here in terms of our architecture, but also contemporary things that are going on like the Kaneko Art Exhibit. This is an image from just about uh, 10 days, two weeks ago, I guess it is. This is Familia, Fam Familia Fun Day, which we hosted on site with a Hispanic theme with lots of music, educational activities, lots of partners in the community, um, dancing on the front lawn. I think Frank Lightright would have been smiling to see this one. It was a great day on the site. We also do fun things in the evening for adults. This is a, a garden botanicals mixology class that we offered as part of Garden Walk Thursdays in Buffalo this summer. We think that our gardens are one of the big attractors, so we participate in Garden Walk Thursdays in Open Gardens Buffalo. Whoops. That was a little too fast, sorry. Another one of our evening classes. This is, we had a trivia night on site recently, which is kind of fun. You don't have to be an expert, believe me, because I participated and I didn't know all the answers. It was not architecture trivia, but fun, trying to bring things into the community. The other thing that people often comment on is we have a great museum store for anybody that wants to shop here locally. We do all kinds of things, programs through the holidays and the like. Um, but I guess what I'd, think of in closing is, you know, the Martin House is a project that has been supported enormously by many people in our community. It is an investment that we're pleased that we were able to lead and guide, but it's everyone's house. It's your community project, those in the audience, those that are out here today. We are always incredibly thankful for the support past and future that Buffalo has given this, that Erie County and Buffalo, the wider range has given this project. If you haven't been lately or ever been at all, I always say visit. Come by yourself, bring your families, arrange a group, bring your friends, your neighbors, your high school, college group, your garden club, whatever it is. We can make it special for you. And if you come here, you'll begin to understand a little bit about why this project matters, what we were doing here and why, why it's important for our community. Um, I'm not paying attention to time, but I'm actually right on time. So that was good. So Dennis, I think we're gonna open it up to questions at this point in time. So I'm happy to answer any and I will wait to see what comes up in the chat room with Melissa. Mary, that was a wonderful presentation and uh, we will, I'll invite folks to uh, enter questions in the chat box. Uh, Mary, I'll, I'll ask you one. one. One of the great resources we also have in our community is a graduate school of architecture and, and design. Uh, is, has there been the inspiration of your project uh, and integration with that uh, uh, graduate school? Or, or is, is there something uh, in, in your sense that's, that's coming together uh, to, yeah. to, to maximize the, the power of both you yeah. and them? 
Um, we have many connectivities to the University of Buffalo, most particularly, as you suggested, with the uh, School of Architecture and Planning. When I think about what we do with them, it ranges from teachers bringing their students here to us participating in hosting their guest lectures for visits here and overnight stays. We often work with specific teachers, programs, on individual projects. It depends on what each year brings. But we have a longstanding legal relationship with the University at Buffalo that continues. Um, as many people know, the house was owned at one point in time by UB for its presidential residence. It became the um, responsibility of the School of Architecture and Planning in a very specific way for many years. And we continue to partner with them and work with them through a legal agreement that gives them in perpetuity access to the house for their educational programs. So yes, the connectivity is strong and varied and in many ways and continues to grow year from year to year. Great, great. Melissa, how are we doing? Any questions? Yeah, we have a few questions and a few comments. So I'm gonna start with a comment from Joanne who wants to say thank you for your programming with the Girl Scouts of Western New York, providing opportunities for our community's youth to grow in knowledge of and appreciation for this historic architecture. Great, we love the Scouts. We endure having Scouts and students on site. I smile because I think one of my favorite thing is when we have Scout groups, student groups on the campus. It is so fun to have them here because it really is it's really easy to learn at the Martin House and it's a fun experience for them. We do a lot of, lot of scout programs. So thank you for mentioning that. We're always proud to partner with the Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts and more. And here's a first question. So is the restoration work completely done? Yes, so we declared victory in terms of our restoration towards the end of 2019 when we finished the landscape. The only thing that faces us now, and we don't count this as part of the major restoration because it will be an ongoing, it has been and will be an ongoing project, is the recreation and sometimes repatriation of missing art glass windows. As I said earlier, there's nearly 400 art glass windows. Some of them are still missing and we work on them on an incremental basis. I'm pleased to say that there was an announcement this week about a museum, the Kirkland Museum, that is returning two windows to the Martin House that have been in their collection for many years. They're coming back next spring, and we're going to have a major announcement later this year in terms of re-replicating and reinstalling uh, missing Tree of Life windows in the main reception room on the first floor. So the restoration is done. It is complete. The fact that some of the art glass windows are still um, being resourced doesn't change it. We're done with restoration. Now we're into capital maintenance. That's our next budget, funding out, figuring out our funded depreciation and what the actual annual maintenance project, how we scope it out. So we've been spending a lot of time in our strategic planning on capital maintenance and funding it. And what is the next significant anniversary for the house or a commemoration marking something important in the house's history? Hmm, that's a good question. I always think significant anniversaries for this house. I don't know, I'd have to go back and think about that from today's date forward. I always like to focus on uh, Frank Lloyd Wright's birthday in June. We like to celebrate around that. That's not really a house anniversary, but you know, 1903, 1904, 1905. I'm not sure what the next significant anniversary is to be honest with you. I have to think about that one. I'll come back and send an answer after the fact if I can come up with the next significant one. And how can people visit? Um, is it by, you know, do they have to get a ticket? Is it by schedule? Can they just stop by? Yep, we have a couple different ways. We encourage everyone to reserve in advance because the tours often sell out. We try and accommodate everyone that wants to visit. Sometimes it gets a little busier than we plan. But if you look online, there are a number of tours available. We have guided tours, primarily um, a Martin House tour. We do a plus tour that includes the Martin House and its connected structures, plus the two other residences. We offer self-guided tours on select Thursdays. We have community events. Familia Fun Day was a great day, for example, where you could come and walk through the house for free. It was a gratis program. We're getting ready to announce our Erie County um, buy one free, get one free promotion coming up soon. So check out our website. There's lots of opportunities to visit special events, lectures, programs. Some of them are virtual right now. Some of them are online, but um, many different ways. Look at our website for the most up-to-date information and for reservations. And who oversees the garden? So the garden is overseen by a variety of people. It is a connection, a collaboration between our landscape architects, and uh, they are the ones who interpreted Wright's drawings. That's Bear Landscape Architecture from outside Rochester and Honey Eye Falls. We have a garden 
company who helps us with the heavy lifting and gives us some instructive advice beyond what the landscape architect tells us, that's the English gardener locally. It is managed internally by our director of facilities, Alejandro Quiros, who has a team of facilities people that do some stuff in terms of lawn maintenance and the like, but we also have, adding to this collective village that it takes to maintain the landscape, about 25, 20 to 25 active garden team volunteers, as we call them. And they work on site two days a week in the warm weather, depending on which day they can come and what they can do. And they work in teams around the site. So it takes a village to maintain the landscape. It is really one of those things that, um, so we rely on a lot of different people's help, a lot of different individuals and collective groups help to maintain the landscape. And we're always open to volunteers, new volunteers in the community. Um, we have lots of opportunities, whether you want to be a docent, a tour guide, as we call the, the groups, um, work in the gardens, education programs, lots of opportunities for volunteer activities here at the site. Will the piano in the house be used for any upcoming music programming? Um, we are planning on having the piano being played for our holiday candlelight tours in December that are coming up. It's always played when we have our Tree of Light event, when the house is open. And this year, that is Saturday, December 2nd, I believe. If I don't have my days wrong, I've got too many dates in my brain right now. Saturday, December 4th. So um, we don't generally have concerts in the Martin House because of all the furniture that are in it. But we do have the piano in use as much as possible for things like that. So look for the events in December in particular. And uh, another comment and then a question. Thank you for all of your outstanding work in bringing the Darwin Martin House back to life. Are there any plans to recreate the Tree of Life window and flower pots to fundraise for the overall project? So thank you for the compliment. And I'm, I'm Melissa, I'm gonna ask you to repeat this. Are there any plans to say that again? I'm not to sure. Recre to recreate the Tree of Life window and flower pots to fundraise for the overall project. Um, I'm not sure what the questionnaire is suggesting there in terms of creating a Tree of Life window to fundraise for the project. Um, we certainly do look at the Tree of Life as one of the most iconic designs and something that people love to support, for example, in terms of, you know, there's a, a group of um, Martin family descendants actually who funded one of the Tree of Life windows. Um, but honestly, we, I'm, I'm not certain if that's suggesting we sell them to fundraise. We don't sell replica windows to fundraise. No, if that's what the suggestion is. I'm sorry, I'm not quite certain I get the gist of it. And then there were just a few other comments saying that you're doing an amazing job and thanking you for reminding us to visit and sharing about all of these programs. No, well, thank you. I know I can see the names on here. It's, it's a bunch of my friends and, fan, you know, it's like, <laughs> hi. Hi, Jerry. I can say hi, Joy. Hi, Margie. Hi, Joanne. Hi, Marisa. It's like, this is great. This is, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir, but there's a lot of new names in here too. And I have to tell you, it, I jokingly talked about taking a village to uh, restore, to maintain the landscape, but this is a project that has captured the hearts and minds of so many people in our community. And I'm not going to denigrate leadership in any way, but say I am just one of many people that have supported this project and worked hard for it over many years. And I started as a volunteer and I will always be a volunteer to this project. And um, I'm really honored that Dennis, that you chose to honor the Martin House today with the Imagine Award, because this is a project of the imagination. So many people years ago, Bob Cressy, John Corton, Jack Wysocki, Jason Aronoff, Jack Quinn, and they all imagined what this place could be. And I don't think anyone imagined how far we could come in the past 20 years, but um, it has been a wonderful journey with so many friends and uh, supporters over the years. So I appreciate being singled out today, but it is a group effort. I always say that. Mary, and that's where I was going to go. And you uh, took the words right uh, out for me to have you just uh, in a moment or a few moments reminisce uh, I can think of people that, that are no longer with us, uh, starting with uh, Stan Lipsy and, and certainly yep. um, uh, Bob Cressy's and, and John Corton's. Uh, uh, it oh, did take a, a village to build this community. And uh, uh, I, specifically, did you have anything in your background uh, that prepared you for the outstanding management of this project? Because it, it takes good management uh, to do this and, and uh, keep everybody going forward uh, and complete the project. 
you, I, my background was in finance. I was an auditor. I went to school for accounting and my background really was more in the financial world, but I grew up um, loving a good project. You know, I used to laugh. My husband got me involved in this and I always loved a good home improvement project. I had no idea where I was going with this, but I have to say that my predecessor, John Corton, was one of the best trainers that you could ever have in terms of, you know, how you motivate people, how you bring people to the table, how you determine what are the needs, how you listen to everyone and try and sort through a lot of the noise to get to what's essential. Um, so I don't know, life is life. I don't reflect too much about it, but I think, you know, the vast variety of experiences that I've had, I've been very, I've been very blessed in life, you know, to have a strong family, a good education surrounded by great people and my colleagues here at the Martin House past and present and the board of directors and uh, folks like John Court and they've just been, it's a team effort. Everybody's been helpful. Well, and uh, Mary, uh, my hat's off to you. You will uh, uh, receive as all the other recipients uh, uh, before you uh, every year, uh, at least one recipient, uh, a peace dollar, uh, 1923 in this case, uh, very symbolic. Almost 100 years ago, uh, we, we celebrated uh, the end of World War I, uh, uh, minted a coin, uh, and our, our best vision of ourselves as America was, I think, symbolized in that, the beauty of the peace dollar. Uh, uh, there are ancient aesthetic values. I've made it the mission of Cezanne to, uh, to search for them. The Martin House I think exemplifies uh, the exploration of, of beauty, truth, goodness, justice, those four ancient aesthetic values. Uh, and, I, and I think in many ways uh, it uh, does that, but it didn't exist <laughs> uh, functionally until you came along and finished the project. Uh, so Mary, uh, hats off to you. The, we've, we've been celebrating all this month the uh, 10th anniversary, last week we had Shane Stevenson, uh, an author of a book on the Larkin Company, as well as East Side Industries, where wealth was created uh, so that these architectural masterpieces uh, could come to life. Today, Mary Roberts has uh, uh, given us a good overview of the Martin House restoration project and completion. Uh, uh, next week, uh, we're going to hear from Ed Healy and Mike Even, two people uh, that I personally uh, uh, work closely with to begin the process of, uh, of trying to get Buffalo to win that competitive bid. And when we did, uh, so they're going to be telling us their story back then and the importance today. And finally, we're going to hear from the two co-hosts uh, of the uh, National Trust for Historic Preservation, Catherine Schweitzer and Robert Skirker. Uh, and that'll be the fourth Tuesday. So uh, stay tuned. If you uh, need to go back and catch up on these, uh, they're archived at the library. But uh, join us next week, uh, if you can, uh, and following weeks uh, to hear about this particular uh, 10th anniversary celebration, as well as future Imagine programs. I'm Dennis Galecki, be well and have a good day. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Mary. I will touch base with you after the fact. I'm sorry to sign off quickly, but we'll no talk worries. to you, okay? That's fine, Mary. Thank I'll you. send you an audio link as well. Oh, that would be great. That would be great, I appreciate it. All right.